thank you very much indeed for asking me back for a second bite of the cake. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure, Simon. I wanted to ask you, um, we were talking earlier about Scotland, and you said that um, now that the uh, now that Britain has decided to pull out from the United European Union, that Scotland wants to stay with the EU, and so there may be a, a, a separation of the, of the two countries. Could you explain further, please? Because we don't hear about this in our controlled media here in the United States. Well, it's a shame because many people in the United States can trace Scottish origin. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a very strong thing. Um, and uh, Scotland is a very, very small country with a very small population. Uh -huh. And it receives more money from the European Union than it pays in. So, of course, they want to stay. I don't oh, blame I them. Um, and the reality there is that if, if England has now voted, as we have, to leave the Union, then Scotland is wanting to stay in the Union. So they'll have to separate. There'll have to be a vote to separate Scotland from England. And that's what will happen within, I would think, six months. My goodness. Now, I don't know um, the history very well of, 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 of Scotland and England, but th they've been one part of one union since, what, the 11th or 12th century? Something like that? It's been a no, long... No, nothing, nothing as good as that, I'm afraid. No? Uh, 18th century. Oh, 18th very century. Very recent. My goodness. 18th century. Before that, we've always been at war with each other. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, and it was called the Act of Union. And we have Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And that made the United Kingdom. But we won't be able to call ourselves the United Kingdom once they split. And we will just be England, Scotland, Wales, and, and Northern Ireland. Interesting. What will happen to Wales, for example? And Wales will stay. Wales will stay because in the vote, predominantly Wales also voted to leave the European Union. I see. Interesting. And Northern Ireland? Where... Um, interesting. Northern Ireland is actually better off in uh, the European Union because, again, it's a very small uh, country. Um, but there's now calls for Ireland as a whole to unify. Interesting. So, to lose the north and the south and just have one island. So there are lots and lots of challenges ahead. Um, wow. um, exciting times, Ted, exciting wow. times. That's amazing, that's amazing. One of the things too that you've, you've talked about is um, um, the, the, the BRICS and, um, and also what's happening not only, but, but the new monetary system. Would you like to explain a little bit about that? Um, well, Last year, uh, in the fall, mm -hmm. there was an economic crash which oh. didn't hit the West, it hit China. And it hit lots of banks that were investing in China. Well, one of those banks is the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank. Right. Now, they lost $3 billion in one day, My which goodness. is their entire year's trading. Wow. Had they traded for the second day, it would have been total disaster. So they pulled out from trading. During that terrible crash, um, they went to uh, the International Monetary Fund to ask for a bailout money. They were refused. Mm -hmm. They went to uh, the European Central Bank and they refused them. They then came to the Bank of England for help. Huh. They refused them. Finally, they went to your Fed and your Fed agreed to support them. Now, we would wonder why would the Fed support the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank? And the reason is that the American gold is not kept at Fort Knox. It's actually kept at the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank. Now, really? when America, the Fed, said it would right. support Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, right. it gave enough support to stop the, the run on the bank. Hmm. The reason they had to do that was had the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank um, gone bust, then when the auditors went in, they would have found there was no gold there, that America didn't have any gold, so the Fed couldn't afford for the world to know that they had no gold left. Now, you'll know, and your listeners and viewers will know, that uh, America owes China a huge amount of money, True. and some years ago it paid off its debt in gold bars. But the Chinese are, are very uh, inscrutable people, hmm. and they drilled into the gold bars and found the Americans had cheated them, that they weren't gold bars, they were tungsten gold plated oh, wow. and that is why that is why some of your uh, bridges and your ports boston 
are owned by the Chinese, because what the Chinese said is, right, you obviously don't have any gold in America, so you must pay this debt off by giving us real estate. And that's why the Chinese owe, own so much real estate of the United States of America, wow. because America has no gold left. Wow. So when we understand that, we then understand why the Fed over the last 12 years has been stockpiling silver. Now, you guys have a very noble tradition of having the silver dollar. And okay. if uh, the worst situation occurs, your country will go back to a silver-based economy. Your country has tons of silver already waiting. The coins are actually being made as we speak wow. because uh, China has one-third of the world's gold. Their currency is called the yuan. So they have a gold-backed currency. Huh. You know that George Soros, who has $30 billion right. in his foundation, right. to, he's been buying gold mines in South America. Wow. So you can have George Soros who owning gold mines in South America. You've got the United States on a silverback currency. You've got uh, China, India, and Russia on a gold goldback, and everyone else with nothing. So uh, it's a very interesting times. Um, so yeah, um, watch this space. I mean, just north of your border into Canada. Right. They are have, having a terrible time. You know, a, a gallon of. Um, liquid to wash your clothes in a washing machine, 30, 30 bucks. Um, packet of, of bacon, six rashes of bacon, $15. The prices in Canada are, are terrible. Wow. Um, and that is an indication of what's happening. Wow, that's amazing. Again, that's not new, news down here. We don't hear anything of it. We hear the latest pronouncements of Obama, who's in town today. I don't know what he's doing, frankly, and I really don't care. Um, and then we hear about Hillary Clinton. And, but you had some interesting things to say about Hillary yesterday on the radio show, um, that yeah. she, she's not entirely human. Would you like, would you like to... Um, I'd love yeah, to, I, I, yeah, I'm happy to do it. I mean, if, if our audience watched the first portion of, of our interview, they would see that we got cut off twice. I'd be very interested to see if, as I start talking about Hillary Clinton, whether they pull a plug on us again. Yeah, well, um, let's, let's do that, see what happens. Go ahead. <laughs> that's okay. They may, they may be tired of doing it to us by now. Right. Um, there are a number of people on the planet who are bloodline. Uh-huh, right. And bloodline has a whole range of um, meanings to me. And the top end of that is somebody who uh, appears to be human, but actually isn't very human at all. And what I'd said on the radio show was that, uh, I think it's about three years back now, uh, it was reported that Hillary Clinton had had an accident, I think in the Senate, where it was suggested that she'd fallen over, banged her head, and therefore she was out of public office for a few weeks while she got better. Right. Um, what I offered was a very different story to that. Mm -hmm. She was on a secret mission uh, to Iran hmm. to speak. I Iran's government is composed of two parts, a president mm -hmm. uh, who is elected and a religious leader. She was meeting the uh, president, not the religious leader. And she was arriving on Tehran uh, air, air strip, and her head seal, Navy seal bodyguard, attempted to shoot her. In fact, he did shoot her. Now, on the radio show, I said that he shot her with a, a Heckler and Koch. I may be wrong. It could have been a Zig Zauer. Um, some of the seals... Uh, very high positions don't always have regulation issue weapons. They right. they have their own weapons. Right. Um, and he shot her because he saw her change into something which he thought was not particularly human. The rest of the bodyguards who did not know what was happening then shot him dead. Now, if your viewers go online, they'll see that, that the, the established media reported that indeed her head bodyguard was killed but they said it was a training accident and he died in his base. So there's real evidence of what I'm talking about. The established media will confirm that he did die, but they lie and say he died in a training accident. And I can tell you that he was shot dead because he was trying to kill Hillary Clinton. Was, uh, was Hillary Clinton, did she change into a reptilian entity or what, what, what did she look like? Well, if you were a bodyguard, right. uh, somebody, you are going to see them at times when everybody doesn't. Right. And you will see someone when they're angry, when they're happy. Um, and he obviously has seen something a bit scaly coming through. And he realized that this wasn't anything good. 
right. and he decided that he would he would do something you know, which he thought was good for the planet. Well, that's fascinating. That's a story that just hasn't been told over here. I'm not, su I'm not at all surprised, Ted. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, in your interactions with the extraterrestrials, have you ever felt threatened at all or, or, um, uh, or any, any problems with them other than you're just having interactions with them? No, I'm very, very fortunate. Um, many people have very bad uh, stories to tell. Right. Um, all I can say, Ted, is that I can only speak for the faction that I, I know. I can't speak for all of them. Um, so the groups that I am interacting with mm -hmm. have um, always been very careful around me. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing. Uh, that's why I'm, I have no fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure if they were hurting me, then I would have a completely different story to tell. Sure. Um, so all I'm saying is that the groups that I interact with, which are fourth dimensional mm -hmm. and generally are considered to be negative to humanity uh, in, in dealings with me, have been uh, um, gentlemen. And that's the best way to describe it, really. Well, that's good. That's really good. I you think know, it's very lucky. Yeah, very good. Well, I'm very happy for that and happy that, that you're able to share this information today. Um, Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind, a personal question. We discussed this a little bit earlier, but often people wonder about their soul purpose and where they've come from. And mm. if you don't mind, I'd like a little bit to ask about my own background. Um, I feel a strong connection to the, uh, to the Pleiadians, but um, was wondering if you might have any thoughts on that. Well, I, I, I'm happy to do you a, a very quick reading. You, you see, you, you shouldn't tell a psychic anything you should wait till the psychic tells you oh <laughs> and then you could confirm whether it's right. right um but we did have a little chat off air so we need to tell the audience and be fair about this sure. um yes uh what i said to you earlier ted was that uh you are fifth dimensional and i explained that the fifth dimension is like a layered cake and the bottom layer is andromeda which is where alex collier comes from Three quarters of the way up into the fifth is the famous Palladian group. And the very top of the fifth, but now moved into the sixth dimension, is Arcturus. Mm -hmm. And I asked you what your eyes were, and everybody says that if you have blue eyes, you're Palladian. Well, that's not exactly true, because if you're an African, you can be Palladian, but you'll have brown eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but others in the fifth dimension have blue. But you are um, an interesting case, Ted because you are higher than the fifth mm. and you clearly decided on a mission on this planet mm -hmm. and the best place to learn to survive is the Palladian group mm -hmm. and you incarnated into a Palladian body and you spent a great deal of time there while they trained you mm -hmm. to survive and understand. That is why you have a strong connection to dolphins and whales and the oceans okay. uh, and you um, have a strong uh, right and wrong. You're very strong about what's right and what's wrong, That's and a right. very strong personality, uh, great strength, strength, and great belief mm -hmm. in the right to life, mm -hmm. and truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is very important to you. You gain those in the fifth dimension with the Palladian group, mm -hmm. and then from there, you missed out the fourth dimension entirely. And that's interesting. And you came straight here to Earth, third dimension. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't got time to talk about your past lives. That's but okay. what I need to say to you is that when Source, God, whatever you want to call this, this creator, when, when that created you, you were actually higher than the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a long history to you, which I'm not going to give away because the bad guys will be watching this just as many, as many good guys, and, That's I, fine. and That's we fine. don't want to help them out too much. That's fine. That's well, I just was curious, and I appreciate yes. you so much for sharing this. It's a pleasure. What, what, what do you what see for the future of humanity, humanity, Simon? Uh, do your friends tell you? Are you able to access what things may happen in the future? The people... People. <laughs> uh, they're, they're people to me, but they're not people. Um, right. They believe in free will. Uh, the, the, the mantis believe in free will. The, the draconis do not. Uh, the mantis say that there is a plan that's been drawn out for humanity, but it is the humans who create the plan through their own decisions and their consciousness. I, I, I give you an example. 
think of a, a corridor. I, I hope that's a word that you understand in your country. Yes, um, of course. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Um, okay. I say a tap. You say a faucet. Oh, I say tr yeah. trousers, you say pants. I have to, <laughs> I have to be careful. That's funny. Um, right, so think of a corridor. There's a wall on the left and a wall on the right. Okay. Humanity okay. has to walk forward. It's got no free will. It has to walk forward. But it has free will whether it walks by the left-hand side of the wall, whether it walks by the right-hand side of the wall, whether it walks slowly or fast or runs. So it's not true free will. But it is free will in terms of our own individual choices. Um, and the, the point here is that if humanity wishes to come out the other end and to create a better life for itself, it really can. Wow. So that's, that's the message. That's a beautiful yeah. message. And thank you so much for sharing that. Um, do they visit you? Are you you're, you're still interacting with your extraterrestrial friends now, I assume. Yes. Do yes, they, indeed. Do, do, they, do they visit you in the physical form or is it in, more in the astral plane in, in, during the dream state? Um, not during dreams. Um, it's when I'm awake. Okay. That's the point. Uh, I don't have... I, I've had one UFO dream that I remember in all my life. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's what will happen, uh, I will get a visit uh, and then there'll be a bit of missing time, and then within two to three minutes, I'll get the memory back. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is during the day, so uh, the, most of the, my visits are during the day, not during the night. Uh, they will arrive physically or in the energy form. If they arrive physically, then there's a problem because they can be detected by Earth-based defenses, also by other alien races that they might be at war at. So it's easier for them to arrive on an energy base, take me out of my physical body, mm -hmm. and then both, both the energies then travel to uh, a, a, an orbiting spacecraft and then use a portal technology from there to somewhere else. Um, so it depends on the type of interaction and what's happening. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I don't have my lab. That's a military industrial laboratory. I don't have the black helicopters. Um, but I have, I've drawn, I've done drawings all my life of what I've seen. And I wanted to hold some drawings up, whether they'll, they'll come through or not. Oh, wonderful. Um, Okay, I'll show you. You know, you know you're, you're Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney created the Mars Corporation, um, and uh, he's involved in, in the profits that come from the, mi the mining on Mars. There is a group of space marines who guard the Mars Corporation. I'm going to do a draw. I've done a drawing. Okay. Um, the drawing I'm going to show you shows the humans dressed as military along the back of the wall, and then a mantis on a sort of a, a levitation device uh, waving what we call the rod of office. Uh, they have uh, a staff which they wave, it's their rank, and then four cloaked uh, creatures around him as he moves forward. So I'm going to hold you the drawing up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. We can see it. We can see it. I'll start from one side and move along. So here we go. These soldiers here are, are at ease because uh, he hasn't reached them yet. And as the procession reaches, they then raise their rifles in that position which is the salute. I see. Interesting. And he has his staff of office, which he's... And I've drawn the circle to show that it's going, I think it's counterclockwise, but I, it's Correct. difficult. I think it's Correct. counterclockwise. Yes, it's counterclockwise. So that, that's, that's a ritual. Uh, he's taking the salute, basically, uh, from these guys. And so it's, it's a visit. He's not in charge of them. They don't uh, respond to him, but it's like an ambassador visiting... Um, and he takes a salute and they just go by. So I thought I would just share that with you. Oh, uh, wonderful. The, the robes are always purple and the rod of office is kept in a pocket uh, down the side. It's a long pocket and the rod is also a self-defense <coughs> self weapon, um, but it's usually used just for ceremonial purposes. So I wanted to share that one with you. Okay, well, thank okay. you. What a thank gift you. you've given yeah. my, my viewers. Thank you so much, Simon. It's, right. it's a pleasure. Uh, it, now, you brought up Dick Cheney. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to ask, is he actually human or is he like Hillary Clinton, who's actually more reptilian based? Um, Dick Cheney is is not quite like Hillary Clinton, uh, but he's certainly more, uh, uh, he's certainly got a lot of non-human in him. He's, he, he's very motivated by, by um, obtaining wealth and 
It's less interested in power in the true sense of the word, but more interested in, in maintaining wealth. He has a connection uh, to, to the elite, but he's not quite as pure bloodline as, as Hillary. I see. Um, I know that Dick Cheney has had several hearts. I don't know how many. Um, does he, in his own belief system, does he believe that he'll, he'll live forever to enjoy his wealth? Or, I mean, that, that's an interesting question I'd like to ask, um, whether... I, I, I can't know what's in his mind. I have never right. met him, uh, either on planet or off planet. So right. I, I, I can't answer that question. What I can, I understand your question, Ted. Um, people who have that type of value-based system wish to live forever because they can't let go of what they've acquired. So they would go for a clone body if possible, um, or they would have organ transplantation. Um, but sometimes they are fearful of being cloned. So some people go through, through a, a problem with that. But I can't know what's in his head. How about David Rockefeller? I think he's 97 or 98. He's still alive. Is he reptilian or reptilian influences? Yes, I mean, God bless them. Um, they're, 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 they have been the top of the pile for, for many, many years. And their time is over, um, or nearly so. Right. Um, here in, in Great Britain, uh, in a very spiritual place called Glastonbury, um, they have a pyramid which they built, and they have meetings in the pyramid uh, once or twice a year. Um, they are um, creatures that exist to gain. They are creatures that exist on the backs of others. Hmm. And... Um, they are what we would call the Illuminati. So they're not all reptilians. Mm -hmm. They are connected to what we call the Anunnaki. They are a mixture of human and reptilian. And some of them are just pure humans who are bloodline um, and, you know, uh, are, are utilized to um, play the game for the, for the, 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 the gain of, of, of um, those groups. If you think about um, Adolf Hitler, and who Adolf Hitler's real father was, that perhaps then gives a, a very interesting um, understanding of how people can be used and, and changed. Interesting, interesting. interesting. How about Donald Trump? I'm curious what, what your perspective is on Mr. Trump. Um, well, what I know for certain is that there are two factions that are very active in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hillary Clinton faction is the steady as she goes. Right. In other words, uh, we, we have the system in place. It's working quite well. Let's just keep it going. Whereas we've got uh, the military and industrial complex mm -hmm. supporting Mr. Trump, uh, who are saying, we're fed up with this. Mm -hmm. uh, we want it to be brought to, to um, a conclusion, and we believe that uh, Mr. Trump will um, give us what we want. Mm -hmm. So you've got the, the, the elite have divided into two factions, those who want to just carry on the way it is, and those who say, you know, to heck with all this, let's go and push um, uh, the final roll of the dice. Mm. What, how do you view Bernie Sanders, interestingly, the Democratic um, I really don't. It's a shame, um, but he's not the key player in this. I see. Uh, what's happened is that a number of people are um, empowered enough to stand against the establishment. Right. But at the moment, the change isn't going to come through election. You need mm -hmm. to understand that, Ted. Mm -hmm. The system is corrupt. The right. system only produces the same sort of result. The only way anyone's going to get any change is when you rewrite the system. And I want to talk to your viewers very quickly about this. We've got about two and a half know, minutes. Please go right ahead. I know, thank you. I know that it won't have been reported in America. Right. It was hardly reported in England. Uh, some years ago, uh, the people of Iceland had enough of their government. They physically stormed their parliament. As incredible as that seems, they physically went into their parliament, took hold of the lawmakers physically, and threw them out onto the street. Oh, my goodness. Now, that wow. has not been reported. No, not here. No. But here. that is what happened. 
Wow. And as a proof for that, uh, Rothschilds were removed from Iceland. There's no Rothschild Bank in Iceland. Wow. And also the constitution for the Icelandic government was written on Facebook because they wanted ordinary people to have a say in the constitution. Yeah. Now, no wonder that wasn't reported in the United States of America because the last thing they want is the citizens going into the Senate and the House of Representatives right. and throwing people out on the street. Wow. But that's what happened in a country. Wow. And that's, that's how people are waking up. Wow. Now, I'm not advocating violence. That's not what I'm advocating. Right. But, what I I am ad but what I am advocating is that people have a, a line in the sand right. in which they say, I have right to freedom and I won't let anybody take my freedom from me. Right. Wow. Wow. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing that, Simon. And your, your website again is www.simonparks.org. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, simonparks.org. Okay. Thank you. And, and I know all of us survive on donations. I, I had a regular job. I was a driving teacher. Mm -hmm. And I decided that this was more important to me than doing the driving teaching work. So if anyone can donate $5, one dollar i don't care anything like that keeps me going Wonderful. i know it keeps you going you donate but that's what the good people do the good people don't have streams of money coming in we're not corporations ted right. are we nice. we survive on the